Hi everyone, Inna PCS Book Reader here. Today I want to talk about Civil War, Peter Parker's Spider-Man by Marvel. The book is more of a DLC revolving an event in Civil War that happens after a certain event involving Spider-Man, which we'll talk about, but I want to use this as a jumping point to talk about Spider-Man and Civil War in general. I think most people already know who Spider-Man is because currently, among any DLC and Marvel superheroes, he's the most iconic superhero and mostly everyone knows about with great power comes great responsibility, even if they somehow never consume any Spider-Man media. Superhero story in general usually works because they have an amazing core to their characters. Batman, for example, is always fighting his own powerlessness when he watches his parents murder. There's a reason he's almost always overprepared. And Spider-Man is on a path of redemption for not taking responsibility to stop a mocking that caused Uncle Ben's death. He is a selfish teenager who is learning to become better and to be more mature and more responsible. What makes him compelling as a character is not only how well developed is his core as a character and not just because he's a hero of the people and people can relate to him from being poor, but because among all of superheroes the continuity of his story is I think unmatched. A lot of people will only remember his time as a student or as a freelance photographer from the movies, but he grew further than that. From high school boy whose experience with love is with the character most of the movie fan will never know, to getting a job, he experienced loss and grief that stays with his character, and they took their time more than the usual comic treatment of that. I'm not saying the whole story is perfect, some arcs are really bad, some arcs are really repetitive, there was a time when the producer kept trying to make it go back to status quo at the end of the 90s, but somehow they always found a way to make some kind of progression, not just to the Spider-Man story, but also to Peter Parker's life. He graduates high school to go to college, he become a part-time photographer and then become a full-time photographer, and he is someone who dropped out of college to become a teacher, which is still the most perfect job for the character by the way, since he's had difficult time in school and has overcome them and matured a lot since then. The other characters are also really well developed with Mary Jane and Aunt May especially becoming a character on their own. Before the event of this comic, Aunt May's house was burned down, so Peter and his family including Aunt May and Mary Jane all moved into the Avenger Tower. Peter even shared his secret identity to Tony Stark because he trusted him. Meanwhile in some other place, a group of newbie superheroes that made their activity into a content was about to arrest some criminal. One of them, Speedball, trying to be dramatic for the camera caused an explosion that killed hundreds of civilians, including children. This caused a push for superhero registration, where their secret identity and their activity needs to be registered to the government. Tony Stark pushed for the team to are pro-registration, while Captain America is against the registration, causing possibly the greatest crossover event in Marvel, Civil War. Long story short, Tony Stark includes Spider-Man without his content to be registered as pro-registration, Peter, who already don't want something like the speedball incident to happen again, already have agreed. So with the push of Tony Stark and his family who trusted him and wanted the world to know his sacrifice, pushed him to agree. So the event led to him unmasking himself in public in support of the registration, leading to the story of the comic, a spin-off on some character reacting to knowing that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. His student knows, his enemies call him by name, they started targeting his family, his ex, Mary Jane and Aunt May even got a chance to show that they can take care of themselves in some capacity. Black Cat having her time to shine both as Spider-Man's ally and on her own. As I said, it's a short story, a spin-off of the main Spider-Man Civil War. The comic is really nothing much. After this comic, during the story of the main Civil War, Peter fought for Tony Stark for a while. He even gave him a new suit, the Iron Spider Armor. But Peter started to become more suspicious of the pro-registration movement. And when he finally saw the dystopian prison and a murder of someone in the prison, he finally snapped and changed team to support Captain America. Iron Man kinda show his insecurity and mistrust towards Peter when he shows that he's built an override into the spider suit that he gave Peter. But thankfully, Peter Parker is one of the smartest people on Marvel, so he already got rid of him. He managed to blind Iron Man for a while and use that windows of time to escape, but that also means that his family needs to move out of the Avenger Tower and that he's now a fugitive wanted by the government. It is during this time that the Kingpin had a plan to kill Spider-Man. He sniped him at a motel and the bullet hit Aunt May. Peter goes around desperately asking for help to save the dying Aunt May. Iron Man doesn't even give him a chance to talk and ask for a beating instead of helping, so Peter did just that. 
he managed to fully web Iron Man and finally had a chance to explain everything. Tony started to feel guilty, but still he won't help. So Peter goes to Doctor Strange, someone who have even resurrected people before, but he refused to heal Aunt May for no good reason at all. I guess he's just cursed to be dumb when it involves a big plot when people need to forget Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And this is the point where the editorial team just gave up on Peter Parker as a character. They decided to help Peter by making him agree with the devil himself. In order to save Aunt May, he chose to sacrifice his marriage with Mary Jane, and it is shown that they sacrificed their child in the process. The story before this is honestly some of the most engaging storytelling ever done in comic. And when Aunt May was shot, it doesn't feel like preaching, where usually a female character just out of nowhere died brutally to become a male character motivation. The chain of events that led to it is really well written and is a making of a great tragedy. And that is somehow done in comic where that can be a lazy and cheap emotional manipulation. Then the editorial team slap you with that conclusion because you dare to think that comic book reader you can have complex character growth. Spider-Man didn't just sell his soul to the literal devil, but also his wife and his unborn baby. Spider-Man, Peter Parker, the guy whose whole thing is responsibility. It's like with some celebrity whose whole thing is being the nice lady like Ellen DeGeneres, but are actually really mean to the people who are working for her with much lower wits. It's such an insulting conclusion that not only killed the core character of Peter Parker, but also Mary Jane and even Aunt May who didn't even have that choice. For some reason, Marvel really did not want to let Peter Parker grow, and as a result, Spider-Man also didn't grow. This is not even the first time they refused to make Peter a father. The first time was after Aunt May's speech about the greatest responsibility. That also ended badly, which is such a weird decision to not let the guy who embodied taking responsibility from having more responsibility. I think the Insomnia Spider-Man game shows how different the end of Civil War can be for Peter Parker. In the game, Peter is not even in a relationship with Mary Jane, so he got no one to fall back on. And Aunt May is younger than the comic Aunt May, she still had so much more to live. But the game show how choosing the harder choice, even if it costs Peter what is quite possibly the person he cared the most, is what Peter Parker would do even if it killed him on the inside, and how despite all the hurt at that moment, he can still move on because there is still a future to live in. And the scene even gave Aunt May the choice to push him into making the right choice. The choice to accept loss, to grieve, and to save people by making the responsible choice. It's kinda nuts how much the ending of Spider-Man Civil War mirrors the ending of Insomniac Spider-Man. The game shows that Uncle Ben died because Peter was selfish. But Aunt May died because Peter has grown to become selfless. Meanwhile, in the comic, Peter starts as a selfish person and somehow after everything that he have gone through, choose the selfish option of sacrificing others because he is so afraid of loss. The editorial team really got what they want, a return to the status quo. Brand new day then reset everything, all the character flow that everyone had for decades, gone. Just like that. What is worse is not just that, they also made them worse. They not only undo the decision that had made them a better person and a better character, but they also killed some of their core characters, making them a worse characters. It's full on character assassination. Because of that, I cannot give this other than a zero. What do you think? Are you gonna read it? Did I miss anything? Leave your thoughts in the comment below and subscribe to the channel. That's about it.